to do the battle of the entry level full frames. The Canon 5D and the Nikon D700. The aim of this outing was to see if any one of these cameras was leaps and bounds ahead of the other. It's not really a battle in specs, nor is it delving into the micro differences of ISO performance or autofocus speed. It's more a case of how the cameras behave on an enjoyable morning jaunt casually taking photographs of things that catch the eye, everyday photography if you will, just with a full frame sensor. So let's talk specs for a moment. The Canon 5D was introduced in 2005. It's got a 12.8 megapixel sensor, it uses the EF mount, so you can't use EFS lenses on it. It's got a Digic 2 processor. It has 9 autofocus points. It's got a pentaprism viewfinder. has a battery life of about 800 shots. And will run from ISO 50 to a maximum of ISO 3200. The Nikon D700, on the other hand, was introduced in 2008. It has a 12.1 megapixel sensor, uses Nikon F mount lenses, has the Nikon X speed image processor, comes with a 51 point autofocus system, 15 of which are cross type, and runs from a maximum ISO of 6400 down to a minimum of 200. The battery life allows for a thousand shots. So as we can see, both cameras are quite similar in terms of specification although the Nikon does pull ahead slightly in most areas. When it comes to dynamic range, it's definitely possible to pull back both highlights and shadows with these cameras, and as long as you're not expecting it to live up to modern day cameras, you won't be particularly disappointed in this area so long as you're shooting with RAW files. Neither of these cameras are particularly aimed at actions or sports photography. The Nikon slightly has the edge with a higher frame rate of 5 shots per second, but really they make good kit for portrait and landscape work. The beauty of full frame is the ability to work with a shallower depth of field. Get a fast nifty 50 on either of these and you've got a relatively, at least as far as full frame sensor DSLRs go, a lightweight general purpose workhorse camera. Full frame sensors mean full frame glass, so when thinking about getting one of these cameras it's worth bearing in mind that you might be paying a little bit more for the lenses to put on them. Here we're using a 24-105 f4L on the Canon and the Nikkor 24-85mm f2.8 f4 AFD lens on the Nikon. With nice optics you're going to get very pleasing shots on both of these 12 megapixel sensors. Being a little less demanding compared to the extreme resolution of modern full frame cameras, you can actually get away with a lot more. Now the D700 can be found on the used market for as little as £300, and the 5D even cheaper at £200. Keep in mind that the cameras at the lower end of this price range can be a little tatty, but both are solidly built. Getting an accurate shutter count on the 5D isn't that straightforward, however, given getting a shutter in place might not be so easy today, it's probably better to keep an eye out for one that's not been knocked about too much. So which of these cameras makes the most sense as a second hand buy? On paper the obvious choice is the Nikon, it 
It's got better eyesight performance, better autofocus system, and is a few years younger compared to the Canon. However, once you factor in the price, the Canon and Nikon are back on equal footing. Either camera is more than capable of producing fantastic images, and both represent a good cheap entry into full frame DSLRs. If I had to pick one, it would probably be the Nikon, but I really wouldn't complain if I ended up with the Canon instead. There's definitely no need to burn one or the other on a barbecue.